Hey YouTube, without any sarcasm, <clears throat> it is a beautiful day. Look at this. 80 degrees on this one. Now this is out in the sun, so it's probably around 70. It's 106 in the greenhouse, or the kiln. I keep confusing them. And I'm about to do some more cutting. So, what I did here this morning was, now uh, yesterday's video was pretty long. I'm not going to go that long today, but... I have a bunch of siding. I need a hundred more linear feet of siding to complete that order. So that's roughly, say, ten pieces of or so. Um, I just put another blade on. You can see it's marked. This is a hand sharpened blade, so we'll see how this works. Uh, one thing I did notice is that um, when you, as you use the blades, it appears that the um, tension on the mill has to be increased a little bit. Not much, like maybe two turns of the dial to get the blade to where it should be. So, right now we're good with that. I just gotta hook up my, uh, um, uh, why can I not think of the name of this thing? The grapple for my bucket to bring a log over. And then I'll start cutting another log into siding.
this is obviously a really good challenge here. Holy mackerel. Let's see if I can roll it back a little bit here. By uh, hooking it on here and just pulling it sort of taut. Wow, you can see that we're about seven inches out there. And this thing's right at 12 foot three. Now, if I come back here to 10 foot, I I come back here to 10 foot. I'm decreasing that distance by more than half. Oh boy. This thing is so crooked that no matter which way I take it, I'm not going to be able to get a good cant out of here unless I cut it. So I'm going to cut this at 10 foot here and then. Uh, because this is, I'm just going to lose the whole log if I don't cut it. So let me get my chainsaw. Tape measure, and you can use a string for this too. 
to give you a straight line, but if you pull the tape measure, you can see that there's not, it's not that bad now, okay? And I'm going to cut it from the top here, just the way I have it, that's where I'm going to cut it. And I think I, I might pick this end up a little bit here. It's down on this end here, but it's not down over here. And I'd like to get it down just a little bit. So I'm up there about four inches. I just want to put this two by, if I can, underneath here. That's it. Okay. Well, that's not bad. All I'm trying to do is like, you know, equalize this so that I, I'm going to get the most amount of wood out of it. That's all I'm doing there. Nothing special. No special technique. Just a matter of trying to get it as level as I can. Got to watch those. If anything, it's going to ruin a blade. That will. This is a uh, two-way modified stone that's been frozen onto the log a couple places. I'm going to have to try and chip that off as I get down there. All right, so let's take a cut out of that. See what happens with it.
that's a sharpened, hand sharpened blade, and I got a really nice straight cut there. Get a look, I'll get 10 pieces out of this. I'm gonna have to go down another inch here because you can see that I don't have an 8 inch cant right there. I have 8 here and I have 8 here. So I figure one more inch down ought to give me an 8 inch cant in here. Either way, I'm only gonna go one inch no matter what. might be wondering, I do have the water bottle filled now, and uh, I have the water turned on very slowly. This pine is really sappy today. my eight inches there I'm close enough a little bit of bark on there uh, that's okay I'm not gonna cut anymore I don't want to you always want to be cautious rather than you know help a scalp of cutting I had to put a new battery in so you can see even the top there that look that look had quite a bend in it it there but it's still nice the wood is nice that's the thing about it the wood hasn't given me any problems on any of these trees so far these three pine trees that I took off so let's make a cut here see what happens we could go right to the 80 inch tank I want to see what that is at that end inches at this end right here so I'm gonna probably go down to nine inches that'll still give me a little bit for the can now some of this ice and rocks that are on here 
even though it's on the outboard side of the saw, because it's, now this is uh, melting pretty quickly, but because it's hard yet, and the rocks are embedded into it, you want to try and get as much of that off of there as you can. Of course, you know, with summer coming, nobody's going to care, I guess, about this. But you want to get as much of that crap off as you can. That's all rocks there like cement almost, so that you don't uh, dull the blade any more than you have to. Now the opposite side looked good, I looked at that. This was this was laying down in the stubs. That's another reason why putting these wood chips down is good, because when you lay your logs on it, all you're getting in it is wood chips, which is nothing compared to the stone. Okay. See, with this right here, I didn't have anything there, so there's no sense in fooling with it. So this is looking pretty nice. Again, the blade is cutting very nice. Nice and uh, flat cut. No issues. Um, it's hard to say which is the straight side of this tree. I don't know. I think this side is probably the straighter of the two, so I'll roll it up and put that on the bone almost doesn't matter at this point. on this side here, right where that dip is. I can't do anything with that. No 
matter what I try to do coming across here, I'm only going to get eight inches out of this, no matter how hard I try. So, there's plenty of wood over here. I could pick this up, but it, it's not going to do anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut so that I'm, uh, I'll go with a 12 inch off the bump to start. That'll keep me above the eight inch can just to see what the wood looks like. so that it's per parallel to the dogs, or perpendicular to the dogs, parallel to the stop. I think I might come up above that 12 inches, just so it's not so heavy of a piece. Let me just check this here. 12 inches above the bump is where I'm going to end up with this cut, but I think I'll go with 14 inches to start off. It won't give me such a heavy piece.
I don't know if you could hear me there. Um, this is nine inches wide. I thought it was eight, so that's good. That's going to help me out a little bit. Uh, the good thing here is, with this being nine inches, and it looks like I'll get an eight by nine cant out of that. Yeah. The thing is, is I might be able to get some more two by out of that somehow. Let me uh, just clear that other edge off. And get the rest of the flinch off of it. Rest of the bark. And then we'll see how it looks. You know, when you look at the wood now and you look at that the picture of that first log, it doesn't look like you'll ever get anything straight out of it, does it? for the backstops now again because we're down on a square cut there. Okay, so Got that dog down. Amazing how nice that looks now. So we'll check this and see where we gotta cut it. Okay, so on this side, um, we could probably go to nine inches just to see how it's gonna look but it's going to definitely give me an 8 inch cant. I, I might be able to get some other board out of this thing. Yeah, it's definitely an 8 inch cant. Well, I guess I'll just go ahead and cut this right at 8 inches. What that's going to do is give me the cant immediately and the piece that's left over I'll set on the pile there and I'll see if I can't do something with it after the fact. Nice. Somebody told me that this pine was going to look this good when I first cut the trees down. Maybe them, some of those bigger ones on the bottom, but I would have said I don't think so. And I got to admit, the wood, the wood is excellent quality. That's what's happening here. We got good wood, even though we got some bends in the tree. It's still showing up as good wood. changing my mind. I'm going to go to 9 inches. I know i got to go down to an 8 inch can. I, I just, I, I always like being cautious. I mean, if you watch my videos, you know that. An 8 inch can will get me right down to what I need to start cutting siding. But let me get that uh, 9 inch off. Yeah, but then if I take 9, I'll lose whatever's there. I'm going to go right to 8. I'm trying to tell you what I'm thinking so you know what, you know, how you might be able to approach something. Let me just tell you some more thoughts. Just to give you an idea, when you look at this thing, okay, I got some wood down here. Now this is before I cut it. 
I got wood here. And I'm thinking, well, maybe I can get a two by out of that. But when you look really close here, you realize that you don't have enough to get it out. So, I guess she's oh, going shopping. So anyway, I'll take that switch off and address that camp up to 8x8. Eight eight. See what we can get off of it. This switch here I'm not even going to bother with anymore just because it's so thin right in there. Okay guys, so with me wanting uh, 100 feet of siding, that's um, 10 footers, I believe. Didn't we cut that down to 10 foot? Yeah, I think it's 10 foot. Let me check that. Yeah. Alright, so that's a 10 footer. So I need 10 pieces of siding. I'll tell you, I will be very happy if I can get 10 pieces of siding out of this. Now it's 9 inches this way and 8 inches up and down. So I'm going to just flip this and then start cutting siding out of that. 9 inches this way, 8 inches that way. So I should be able to get more than 10 pieces out of there. If I can, I'll cut all siding out of it. Just in case they need a little extra. Looking good though. red knots in this whole piece and you can see a little spike knot here and one black knot. Th this is more than premium. Uh, this is above premium this siding. So I don't know why I tightened that. I gotta put the jigs under there. Oh. Guys I had gotten a couple different comments about prices and stuff. Let me tell you something, if you try to buy yellow, or I mean white pine siding, lap siding like I'm cutting, an 8 foot piece is $26 for one piece. Okay, what I was saying yesterday, in case you didn't catch it, about these jigs. Right now, it's a flat cut, because the, the jig handle is down. So, when I turn this jig handle up, like this, that's a bevel cut. Now, the good thing is, the, the uh, dog, this dog can move up and down. Wow, my hair must really look like some. Anyway, the, <laughs> the dog can move up and down slightly, so we don't have to loosen the dog to get that bevel cut that we want. We can just work with the uh, siding jigs by themselves. Nice. Oh, this is going to be nice. I'll cut one or two pieces of siding here for you, and then you don't need to watch this whole thing. It's watch siding for three days in a row now.
I was looking for. That's number 10 for today. And that makes um, 600 linear feet of siding. Now I'm going to cut the rest up and throw it on here just in case any crack or anything or if they make any bad cuts, they ain't going to charge them any extra.
this into a one inch board. Because of the way the jig stopped this cut and uh, the way everything else works here, um, it ends up with me having almost a one inch board to play with at the end. So I'll just trim that off there a little bit and when I run it through the planer I can make a nice straight board out of that. So there you go. 600 linear feet of this stuff. If eight Let's see, it's a roughly three, four, three dollars a board, three dollars a running foot. So that's eighteen hundred dollars right there worth of siding. And I think that's like four hours of cutting probably. Oh, have a good one. I'm weighing on this one. The other, one. the other one's pretty good. A little bit of pitch marks in it. A little weighing on one end here. We're not going to worry about that. I'm going to call them eight footers. And that's a wrap for that wall. All right, so we got three, six, nine, ten, 12 pieces of siding. That was out of that bent log. 12 pieces of siding and two two by fours on the top there, eight. And this one by eight, that's 10 foot long. Not bad out of that really crooked looking log.